We're on. Okay, so the observer. So the observer, um, what's the value of the observer? The value of being the witnesser or the observer is that um, it's, it's a form of being very, very close to, uh, close to uh, the true self because one has disidentified with the story, uh, with all the circus of thoughts and things which are going on within the, uh, within the ego. So the more you can just be in the observer and detach from being in thinking and detach from being in the future or the past or being in, uh, being in any kind of body identification or time identification or image identification. So just to remain in the observer. Now the thing, the, the, to stay in the observer will start to, uh, over a period of time, you'll start to get what, into what's called the flow states because if you don't keep hooking into the story and the thoughts and don't keep hooking into the body and don't keep hooking into time or the future or the past then just staying in the observer at a certain point what it starts to do is dissolve the habitual identification with hooking into the ego and if you can do that for a while whether it's a few hours or a whole day suddenly the uh, observer becomes self-sustaining and as soon as the observer becomes self-sustaining, you'll get a phase of being in, the, in a flow state. Now, most people have experienced being in flow states for a short or long period of time. But it's when everything miraculously happens and you're not struggling through life. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, the, all the buses arrive on time, money comes in through the post from nowhere. And it's like everything is you're in the timeless now. And there's an effortlessness grace to life. And you realize then that not picking up and hooking into your ego, mm -hmm. the sacrifice of doing that until you get a solid observer. That's why I think it's well worth it. I mean, the, the thing of just going into the observer for one second and then going back into your head for the rest of the day, I think, you know, you're, you're missing out a lot. But there is a price to pay because the ego and going into those dramas and going into all, all those future projections how you can control the neighbours. I mean, it's juicy. It's really, really juicy. <laughs> so, so it's like, so you have to like, you know, oh, you're in the observer for one second and suddenly this juicy thought pops in, like, you know, so basically it's take the bait, you know, like let's get into this big story or hook in, you know, or hook into the body or hook into time or, you know, or an envelope comes through the door, whatever it is, you know. Um, and so the ego will be, Initially, as, as soon as you go into the observer, will try to tempt you back into the head, mm -hmm. back into a story, back into thinking. So the observer, for me, is not just to get one glimpse of it, is to keep being in the observer and you have to resist the temptations. You know, the ego will just put a, a juicy thought here, a juicy thought there, like get hooked in. And you just have to go, you have to be like, almost like, a, like an enlightened teacher. Like as soon as a thought arises in consciousness, just drop it. You know, so like St. Francis says, what you're looking for is where you're looking from. What you're looking for is where you're looking from. So that's an intention of to stay, stay inwards. Mm -hmm. Don't go into the world and pick anything up. Because the whole world is temptation. The whole world is screaming, uh, pick me up and go into duality. Mm -hmm. So you're biting the apple of duality as soon as you purchase anything. As soon as you purchase the first thought, you know, you'll be off on a big juicy story and, and, and you've forgotten the observer. Yeah. So you want to, so for me, the thing with the observer is if you're going to do the, I mean, you know, for people who've never been in the observer, this is sounding quite hard, but if you can be in there for one second today, then tomorrow at least try and be in there for two seconds. And then the day after, at least try and sustain the observer for three seconds. You know, and over days and weeks and months and years. But you're developing you're developing uh, a capacity not to pick up the bait of the ego. Mm -hmm. And the more you do that, now when you do that, uh, the more you practice the observer, you'll soon start to get rewarded with periods of grace, periods of flow, timelessness. And when you're in those, they're so beatific, it's worth, it's worth uh, you know, just practicing not picking up the bait. Now, if you're really in, in, in a grievance or you want to kill somebody or 
you're really hooked onto something, uh, some nice juicy story, it can seem very difficult to get into the observer. So there's a momentum because you're so addicted to being in the story mm -hmm. to unhook from that and get into the observer. It's, it seems like you're having to reverse in a, a very, very strong addiction, which is now clawed in energetically to pick up the next thought. Mm -hmm. So you do it, you know, you, I've got videos on YouTube, uh, which are called the Observer Tool. If you go into my YouTube channel and just type, or Sabir Muslim Observer Tool, you get like seven or eight videos, or nine, ten videos. Just watch them and they'll guide you. And then, and then you should be able to, with guidance, or do your own, or get your own teacher doing the Observer, getting the Observer, and then stay in there for and then have a commitment to grow that capacity to stay in the observer every day. If, you're, if you wake up one day and you're practicing the observer and, and you're really and you're stuck in your ego, you want to kill somebody, even practicing the, getting to the observer, you've learnt a lot if you can go from being in your head to getting to, even for one second, you've deflated the hooks. And then tomorrow again, you might be, wake up in the morning really serene. And it's really easy. But then why don't you try and be in the observer for a few minutes or even half an hour or something on an easy day? But through that, you know, you're just growing the capacity. The observer, you are, it is very, very close to who you are because you're not picking up um, thoughts, you're not picking up the body, you're not picking up time. So by doing that, it's like to surrender your ego to God means that you're going to start to develop the qualities of God qualities of God are, I'm not a this or a that, I'm not a thought, I'm not, I'm not of time, I'm not a body, I'm not a feeling that comes and goes, so I'm not a story, so you get, you're dissolving all of that. Now if you keep staying in the observer, once you get these, now if you get into, I mean most people will stop when they get into phases of grace, because it's just too enjoyable, you know, just everything flies by and you're in timeless grace. But if you, I mean, always it is to go if you see if you can go deeper. So then, if you can go, if you're, if there is there something which is observing the periods of grace, because what you're looking for, is there anything deeper than periods of grace? So then you start to explain. Now, if you're a Hawkins, um, if you're a Hawkins student, you realize there's always something deeper. Mm -hmm. So then you start to get the mystical, deeper mystical experiences start to happen. So. Uh, and you can go into Hawkins' deeper, deeper books onto the, the, the enlightening spiritual experience. Because you're now letting go of the fundamental hooks of the ego, which is basically being identified with, the, with all aspects of limitation. Mm -hmm. your, your thoughts are, are limited in nature. The body is limited in nature. Time is limited in nature. The body is limited in nature. The observer, now you can get to the observer, but you know, if you're in the observer, is there any limits to that observer? Is it very spacious, but in, is there something observing the spaciousness? You know, is there anything hooking in? Even if you're in the observer and there's a state of flow, even if there's noise, what's observing the noise? Yeah. Uh, or even if it's flowing, is there something that is observing the flow state? So you can always see if you can go deeper. Um, so I think so those are the things, you know, it's like, why, why should you do that? Well, if you read Hawkins' work, you realize the more you go into limitation, the more everything goes wrong in your life. You know, it's like as you start to get more identified with your body, with your story, into, uh, uh, into the low vibrations of anger, fear, um, shame, guilt, as you go into those things, you find that all kinds of things will start to go wrong. Mm -hmm. Unmanageability will start to creep in. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, so, and as you go higher, everything, everything starts to heal and all the start, things start to go your way. Or things that you think are going to go wrong don't go wrong. Because you're now, you're now, it's almost like you're getting a shield of grace that's trying to take care of you as you're, you know, it's like the more you let go, the more the divine is called to, to do. I mean, I like what Tolkien said, he said, even the 12 steps, you know, if, you, if I give my life to God, mm -hmm. then, you know, now, go, you know, uh, then I will be under the care of God, is what we say in the 12th step. I give my life to you, God, so I will be under your care. Mm -hmm. So God's sort of saying, like, if God could speak, it's like, surrender your thinking and try and control the world, and I'll look after you. Or, God's a gentleman, if you want to go back in your head and, and try and control the world, <laughs> go do it. Mm -hmm. But I'm not, you know, 
I'm not going to intervene because you've just taken on the on the reins. So that's the thing for me. Like you know, pursue the that's the benefits of the observer. Being the observer means you're very very close to God. Uh, maintaining the observer means you're very close to God, and it's a it's a very advanced practice. It's like your 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 um, if you maintain the observer for long periods of time, the even deeper things are going to happen for you because it's an act of very deep surrender.